All right, and here we are, right after the last episode. No breaks in between. Now we got. I'm gonna, gonna have to try and find that uh, tape. But there's a tape in here. Which is strange, because if the gas ignited the electricity, you'd think that this flare would totally like light them up, but. There it is. Log code two four four five nine. In relation, experiment one zero zero six. The prototype. Stubborn as he is, and always silent with each passing session, I'm still uncovering fresh data nonetheless. Today's discovery. <laughs> End of log. Hmm. Ready to talk now, are you? I possess a question. Go ahead. Do you feel anything? <sighs> this question referred to what exactly? You stick us, beat us, tear our flesh. There's a secret inside you, 1006. Valuable beyond all measure. I cut and prod and burn at it. And I get closer with each session. So speak. Or don't. Fight. Or give in. Regardless, I learn something new about you every day. <laughs> it excites me. Yeah, I kind of would have liked to have seen his reaction to that. Because I was kind of going into what I say before, like maybe the rest of the smiling critters were against catnap in the prototype because they were adults and they either knew what was happening or didn't know what was happening, but they just knew that the prototype was like bad news because like all the adults in the place don't seem to, at Playtime Co, don't seem to like the prototype. So they're all adults, therefore they know the prototype's bad. But Catnap, being a kid, was impressioned enough and his life was saved that he liked them. So that's why they didn't get along. They had all the other smiling critters seem to have like personalities like, oh, Bubba's smart and kicking chicken's cool. So you always want to be cool because kids like cool stuff. They want to show him like love and all that. But like Catnap seems to out like he doesn't really have like a personality. He just makes you sleep. And like if you look at all the animations and everything they have, you know, catnaps makes you sleep, but it's not like dog dog day can like make you happy with his or Bubba Bubba, Bubba Fink can't make you smart and Bobby Bear Hug can't make you love. I don't know, my own little theory. Someone else would probably come up with it a thousand times before me, but Still think it's kind of funny how they're like, oh, you're so capable. Dude, I almost died a dozen times. Wow, you did it! You must feel pretty good. With Catnap dead, you're one big step closer to the prototype. One step closer to winning. You've made your choice. You're staying to help Poppy. Well, finish the job. Make a little tree. I don't know. I kind of like how they did that, though, because, like, you don't really know if he was, like, 
giving his life to the prototype or he was asking for forgiveness or if he was just like oh you'll help me oh yeah might want to use the battery eh Yonk. hello mr. battery Didn't know you had to stand on the console. Actually, I didn't know that because you had to do it before. Every time I beat this game, I had to use jump on the console, but I just assumed it was like a glitch or something because I'd always hurry up and kind of ignore Ollie. Hello? Hello? Ah, you'd think that these black cables would turn blue at least, but oh well. Come and poppy and kissy. Good, you're here. And you've done it again. The impossible. Just like I knew you would. Catnap's gone. The red smoke is diverted. Everything is falling into place thanks to you. But if we're to keep going, then, then you deserve to have the truth. Came back because of your co workers. We want to know what happened and why. This. This is your answer. We called it the Hour of Joy. happening what are those things <laughs> senseless slaughter that's all it really was they killed everyone the guilty the innocent it didn't matter all of that death didn't fix anything and then once it was all over they dragged those corpses down below where they'd never be found and they 
aid the bodies to stay alive. The prototype has to die for this, for everything. We reach the bottom. Present the loop back up. Just hold tight, okay? After you. Hmm. Oh yeah, I think I forgot to listen to catnaps, didn't I? Yeah, and then they do things like that because it kind of sounds like snoring, but also sounds like, and I can't think of what it's called, but it's like a body's reaction. So like if you're straight up, you know how like sometimes when someone's dead or something's dead, their body will like twitch and you like pour salt on it or something. Their body can like twitch still. It's kind of, kind of like a reaction where like, oh yeah, you're like essentially brain dead and your body's not getting any oxygen, so it just kind of makes like a reactionary noise, and that's like it. So that means that uh, Theodore Grambell, the cat kid that was turned into catnap, was like literally as dead as you can be without actually being dead. So, there's that. Yeah. Once we hit the ground, we need to be cautious. There's something... Well, there you go. I always think it kind of wonders. Because, like, I assume whoever killed... Because people keep coming up with theories on, like, who killed Kissy. I think, and maybe I'm wrong, I think it's the next villain. Because they always do that. Like, I remember when Chapter 1 came out, they were all like, you know, that the whole... You know, the itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout and all that kind of thing that Poppy was doing during that uh, commercial. Or the, uh, yeah, for Poppy Playtime uh, trailer. People were like, oh, it must be Kissy Missy. Maybe it's her. And then it was like a new character. And then they were going around the second time. They were like, oh, I wonder if it's Braun because that was like a big theory because I always thought, I always thought, Oh, it's gas. So, like, Braun could have the gas thing, and, you know, he'd be like a giant dinosaur, long neck dinosaur, just breathing gas out from his long neck. You know, like, he has a long neck, he's super high up, and then he just breathes it, and then it just, like, covers everything, and he's, like, a watchy, watchful kind of character. Like, he watches over the kids, and he's so tall that all that gas just spreads out across the whole room. And then it turns out it's a new character. So I don't think this is going to be any of the old characters. I think it's going to, I think it has to be like a new character, right? I don't know. I think it depends. I feel like if we go up, because we were going up and that thing above us was coming down. So if we go up and that comes down, we don't get to see. We just think she's gone forever. But then if 
we are able to go up and we see, we'll either see her gone and then like try and follow her but can't or we'll see man Aveline Delaney did pretty much every female voice that's cool and then we'll see like her corpse or something I feel like we're either gonna be able to go up and see her corpse or just see that she disappeared and try and chase her back somewhere or I feel like we're gonna be locked down there and not know what happened Anyway, that's the end of Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. Super fun chapter. Uh, I'm pretty much right after this recording. I'm going to go do the speed run of it. So that's all I have for now. Bye.